Hello, today we're going to show you how to do a repair on uh, a Toyota speaker. It's actually made by JBL uh, for Toyota, and these are very common in the Toyota Tundras and the Toyota Sequoias. Uh, we have a, a woofer model number uh, 86160 uh, AF070, and then they also have another version, which is the other side of the vehicle. It's the same speaker, 86160 uh, AF060. And uh, these are a match pair that come out of the Toyota um, Sequoias and Toyota Tundras and the doors. And the common problem that happens that we see on these is the foam edge deteriorates around the edge of the cone. Today we're going to show you how to replace that so that you can repair the speaker. And that will save you quite a bit of money uh, over buying new units uh, through Toyota. They are a unique impedance, so you cannot put a generic or aftermarket speaker in its place. You either have to purchase a brand new one or do the repair that we'll outline here for you today. We also sell uh, kits here at the store for all of the different Toyota systems and the uh, Lexus systems which use Mark Levinson, which is essentially the same company, just a little higher end level of, uh, of uh, their company. Uh, but it's the same idea, all the deterioration that occurs on all these different speaker models. And here at Simply Speakers we carry parts for all of these. Uh, we also do the repairs here in, in uh, the shop as well and today we'll go through that, uh, that process with you. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start with the repair process on the uh, Toyota speaker here. Um, you'll notice there's kind of a foam covered trim gasket. You can kind of see the plastic here on the frame and this pries right off. Usually they kind of fall off or pry off. If you need to use a screwdriver you can kind of get in there and kind of twist that a little bit and then usually that'll peel right out of there as you can see here. There's some foam residue on the back that we're going to go ahead and clean here. Um, we'll get to that here in just a little bit for you. But once this trim gasket is removed you'll see the part that has failed and that's the foam support or su surround or suspension around the cone and you'll see where it's split away all the way around. You can kind of put your fingers around it See how it's dry rotted and deteriorated and this is a very common problem with all the uh, JBL speaker systems from the Toyotas as well as the Mark Levinson systems uh, out of the Lexus vehicles uh, and many others as well but these are the, these are the two common ones that we see. Uh, in this case you'll see where the foam is just kind of breaking apart here. Uh, when we come back we'll do a frame cleaning here for you. We'll show you how to remove and peel away the old foam uh, safely from the cone and then we can get started with the repair for you. Alright, so we'll get started with the cleaning procedure for you on the speaker repair here now on this. And you'll need to gather up a couple of things to do the cleaning. We use a uh, retractable utility knife like this, which is handy for kind of scraping and getting in here and removing the old foam. We'll show you that. Uh, some folks like to use kind of a wood chisel to, to kind of do some scraping here, and that's optional if you'd like to go that route. Screwdriver to help remove the gasket. We showed you that earlier in the video. Uh, an old paintbrush is nice to kind of brush get all the dust and dirt off the cone. You need a little rubbing alcohol uh, to help dampen and remove what's left of the residue. That helps soften it and makes the removal a lot easier for you during the repair. If you don't have rubbing alcohol or if you want to use something a little stronger if you have it, you can also substitute uh, and use lacquer thinner. does the same job. Uh, it's just a little nastier to work with so be careful with that, but that does uh, work very well to cut the old foam material and soften it up for you. Um, basically we're going to have the kit, which when you buy the kit from us, is two foam rings and we have the instructions with the photos. We have videos, of course, on YouTube like you're watching now. Uh, we sell them for all the different models of Toyota and uh, Lexus. And some of them are single models for subwoofers that are in the trunks of the cars. Others are sold in pairs for the uh, paired door speakers like these. And so there's several configurations and several types that we deal with here at the store. But the first thing you want to do when you come in for the cleaning is we like to come in and just use the utility knife and kind of scrape in here on the frame like this and start to cut away the old foam material just to make sure you have it all the way around. When you get near the lead wire area here, you want to be very careful not to cut the wires because they're right underneath the cone. They're very close there. You can see there, I'll peel that back so the camera can kind of zoom in and see that. You'll see the wires are on the back. Obviously you don't want to cut those. Those are important for you. So take your time there and pay attention to, to what's going on. Um, once you've kind of scraped this all the way around like this, that kind of helps to loosen it. <coughs> then we'll come in here and on the cone is we usually start right where the lead wires are and we'll just kind of cut right along the edge of the cone there. You're not cutting the cone here, you're just kind of cutting away the old foam 
Again, very carefully pay attention to the depth of your blade so that you're not cutting the wires when you get to that point on this side of the cone here. Come in like this and just kind of cut that away just like that. Make sure you have a good sharp utility knife like we're showing you here. Okay, and You'll see that the piece comes off just like this. All right. Obviously this is garbage so we'll throw that away. Kind of keep an old rag handy here. You can kind of tap the old stuff off the back of the, uh, the cone there and any of the residue that stays in place. Now you still have some residue left on the frame. This needs to go away and you can approach that a couple of ways. You can use a utility knife and kind of scrape that like this. Kind of tilt it up so the camera can see that here. Okay, and you'll see that it's a little bit messy. It's a little bit nasty to work with there. And that's where you'll find that if you come in with an old paper towel, just fold it up into a couple of layers like this. Use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I'll show you that here. Try not to get in the way of the camera there. Whoop. Get a little bit on the cone. It won't hurt anything. Just dampen this like this. You'll see that comes right off there. You can kind of let that soak in. And again, if you get a little splash over on the cone like we did there, we try not to do that. Um, but in this case, it doesn't hurt anything. That'll, that'll dry right out of there. Rubbing alcohol is a fast, fast evaporator, and that does not hurt anything. So we come all the way around the cone like this, dampen this. And it's a little easier when you're working straight down on the bench like this here. I'm trying to show you for the camera the correct angle there. So you'll see that. You're just dampening that edge. Let that soak in a little bit all the way around. And then you can come in with a utility knife and just kind of scrape that away and you'll see that comes right up. See the pieces there? Come right off the frame. Any of the big pieces just kind of peel away. And that's what the rubbing alcohol or lacquer thinner will do for you there is it helps kind of break that down and makes this part a little bit easier and not, uh, not quite as messy. But this is the dirty part of the job so take your time here this is the hard part, is getting the clean and prep ready on the speaker. You can hear the blade kind of scraping right against the metal there on the, on the frame. That's fine. Just kind of clean that as much as you can. You don't have to scrape it down to bare metal, but you want to get all of the old dried foam gone and away from the frame just like that. And when we come back, this is where your paintbrush kind of comes into play. So you can do a little bit of this. Okay. This rubbing alcohol will dry right out of this cone. This won't be a problem. When we come back, we'll show you how to deal with this little residue that's along this edge of the cone here. And uh, we'll kind of clean up our mess and do, uh, do step two of the cleaning there. And then we'll show you the gluing of the uh, new parts. All right, so we showed you how we clean the frame here. We still have a little bit of residue on the cone that we're going to deal with, and we'll show you that here in just a minute uh, on the uh, Toyota speaker here. And don't forget, we removed the gasket earlier that sits on top. It's got the little kind of dust seal along the top there, and that's got some residue on the back as well that you can see here, just a little bit of foam residue. So we want to clean that off, and we'll take the rubbing alcohol for that as well. We'll just kind of dampen that on there like this, just kind of wipe that around. You'll see it starts to come off almost immediately for you. And again, it gets a little bit messy, but that's okay. This is where you kind of want to work, maybe out in the garage or somewhere where you can lay down an old towel or blanket that you don't really care about too much. And you can see there where it's all dampened now, we can come in here with a utility knife and we'll just scrape that right off there. You see that coming right up there, just like that. That's what you want, okay. Come around, just like this camera can kind of see that there. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get all the old dry foam off of there so that when you reattach it to the frame, it's clean. Okay? And that's what you want right there. Just like that. Okay? And we'll wipe that down one more time before we glue it on, but that's that's the uh, pretty much the gist of uh, getting all that off of there and uh, once that's kind of cleaned off you just set that aside this will be the last thing we glue back on uh, to the speaker after the repair uh, is complete.
All right, so we got the gasket cleaned up like we showed you here, and that's what you need there. We'll just kind of set that aside. Uh, here on the, uh, <clears throat> on the speaker itself, we have the cone here with a little bit of residue on it that we need to get rid of. And on these, um, on these models of Toyota speaker, um, these JBL speakers for Toyota, um, you'll find that the old original surround was kind of attached on the back of the cone, right in here where you can see that. And we find that a lot of our customers have trouble uh, duplicating that rear mount um, with the uh, new surround. The surround fits back there properly, but it's very difficult to glue. And even if you get it glued, a lot of times you'll get uh, some little gaps in there in the, in the adhesive if you don't do it just perfectly and you may get some ticking noises off of it. So on this particular model we like to do the new attachment right to the top edge of the cone right along here. Okay, and the performance of the speaker is the same either way. That doesn't hurt anything at all, and it makes the repair job a whole lot easier for you. Uh, you'll thank us for that tip uh, on that uh, as far as, as this particular model goes. So we're going to go ahead and clean the edge of the cone, and we're going to just prep prep it for a top mount here uh, as opposed to doing a rear mount. The frame is just very shallow here. There's not a lot of room to work. And when they build the speaker, the surround is already attached to the back of the cone. Um, but again, it's more of an appearance uh, issue than anything else. It doesn't affect performance either way. So we'll start here uh, on the cleaning. You want to take a, make sure your blade tip is very sharp on your knife. Come in right here along the edge of the cone like this, if the camera can kind of see that there. And we like to just come in here and start to kind of peel away this layer of glue that you can see here. It's kind of sticky. Just take your time. Come in here just like this. I'll try to keep my hands out of the way so the camera can see, see kind of how we're doing it there. And uh, it's very tedious. It's a little messy. Just take your time with it. Once you get this part done all the way around the cone, uh, the rest of the repair will go very quickly for you. Okay, so we're going to just kind of work this and we'll work several times around the cone as needed to kind of get that off of there. Again, I'll try to keep my hands out of the way of the camera angle here. And kind of peel a layer of that glue right off the top of the cone. You're not cutting the cone. It's very important, okay? You're just peeling away this old glue residue. You kind of score it, come back. Do it a couple of times, just work about an inch at a time all the way around the cone. Just kind of pick it off of there, just have an old rag handy like we have here to throw the old stuff on. And you can kind of hear the blade doing the, the work there for you. Depending on the production time of the speaker, some of these are a little worse than others um, as far as the amount of adhesive that you'll have here. Some of them are very easy, they peel right off in one step and others require a little bit more work like this one here does. Give you an idea kind of how that works there. You can see the glue coming off and you're removing the old glue and foam at the same time. All the way around, okay? You can kind of pick at that. Don't peel the cone back, just take your time with it. You don't want to put too much pressure on the paper and you run the risk of creasing the paper which could be a problem for you. So you just want to lightly work this around. Just like this. And you can see we've got about a third of it done there. We're going to go ahead and finish the rest for you and we'll come back and we'll show you how to install the new part. All right, so we're done cleaning the edge of the cone. We were showing you uh, how that's done there, and we kind of finished that up before we came back uh, on this. And as you can see, all the way around the cone, we've cleaned the old glue residue off uh, all the way on that lip because we're going to be gluing the new surround to the top of the cone in this case, all right? On the back, there was a foam uh, kind of residue left from the original surround that was pretty deteriorated. So we took the time and just kind of ran our fingertip underneath the edge and kind of peeled that all the way around as well and removed all the bits and pieces of that uh, just so we have a cleaner job when the repair is done. But this is what you want. Once this is ready to go, you can see this on the back side of the cone right in here where I'm pointing. That's all been kind of peeled away and cleaned. Cleaned here, very careful with our lead wires coming from the terminals of the speaker here, not to damage those when we do the cleaning on these because they're very close to the cone. And then the top edge of the cone has been cleaned all the way around. The frame is clean and ready. 
Our gasket goes back on top. We've cleaned the back of that, so that is ready to go. And at this point, we're ready to install the new surround. Okay. Now, you'll notice on these, um, when you buy them from us, they come out of the package, they have a little uh, lip on them that kind of angles up that meets the cone there because it's the original part, so it's designed to go right on there. Now, sometimes customers call us and they're not sure which way it goes when they mount it, whether it's uh, kind of angled down like this or this way. Well, this is the proper way where you have the angle coming up because that's what sits along the edge of the cone here. You can see I'm kind of tucking that in there with my thumbs to show you how that fits. All right, now it's a little bit of a snug fit there, and we are going to do a top mount on the cone because that makes the repair a lot easier for you, especially do-it-yourselfers at home. So we'll use the glue that comes with the kit that we use here in the shop as well that you'll have in the small tube. This tube will do six to eight speakers, so you'll have a tube to do the pair. There's plenty of glue. You don't want to use too much, and you'll have your instructions and, of course, this video to watch, which will be very helpful for you. First thing I like to do is take the surround and just kind of run it through my hands a couple of times like this. Kind of softens it up a little bit, stretches it a little bit, and makes it just a little bit bigger on the inside, okay, which makes it a little easier to lay down on the cone. All right, you can see here that we're going to have to kind of work it down onto the cone edge as we glue it, but the adhesive is aggressive enough to allow you to do that, uh, and that's why we use the types of, uh, of special glues here at the store and supply them in the kits for you. So we'll set that aside. Again, you just run it through your hand, one or two rotations, just like this just kind of pinching lightly with one hand and kind of pulling with the other, okay? And that kind of gets it where you need to be uh, there on that. You don't want to pull it too hard. You don't want to, you know, take a chance on ripping it, but it's pretty durable when it's a new material. Uh, it's, it's very strong. All right, so we'll set that aside. We have our glue tube here like this. We'll keep a clean rag kind of handy and ready to go. And what we want to do is we'll just start right here where the lead wire is. We'll run a small bead of adhesive right along this edge of the cone just like this. If you get a little bit extra there, just wipe it up as you as you go along. Kind of use your hand to steady this right along the edge. Okay. We'll smooth this out here in a minute. So the first thing to do is just get the glue installed on the cone. Just like this. Okay all the way around. If you have any little spots, you can come back and kind of touch those up. Cap the glue off to keep that from drying up there at the tip. And then, we'll come in here with our finger, just kind of smooth that out a little bit, just like this. Come back in with the fingertip here. And you don't need to use a brush or any other special tool for this. It's really better to get your hands kind of in this so that you can feel and see what's going on. Glue's not going to hurt you. Kind of spin the speaker like this, works very well. <coughs> You'll see you have a nice bead all the way around of the clear adhesive. We'll let that sit for a moment or so. Start to get a little bit tacky. Wipe up any excess if you see it. Okay, and that's what you want. Just like that, all the way around. Right on the top of the cone, a nice heavy bead. I'm going to take the surround now at this point, and we'll just kind of lay it in place. And we'll start to just kind of slowly use our thumbs. Just kind of tuck it down like this. Just kind of pull and tuck. You can use your fingertips, use your thumbs. I'm kind of going all ways for you so that you can see this. I don't want to get in front of you with the camera here, so I kind of tilt this up here. Kind of turn the speaker if you like. Just kind of work this down. And what you want is you want to have the top edge of the foam just sitting right above the edge of the cone there all the way around. So you'll tuck this in, just kind of push down. As the adhesive starts to tack up, it'll start to grab that surround for you on the new part and hold it in place for you. So you don't need to clamp it or tape it or worry about any other issues there. The adhesive is aggressive enough to kind of do that for you. So we're just going to continue to kind of work this around. I'm going to hold this up with one hand so the camera can see it there a little bit better. And you'll see I'm just kind of pushing down with my thumb as I work around, just like this. Okay? Kind of rub this way and kind of massage the surround down into place along the edge of the cone. That's what you want to do. Take your time. If it moves a little bit, don't worry. You can come back and correct it. Okay? Right. 
and you can see that it's starting to grab and starting to stay in place properly now um, just like we kind of mentioned that it would there for you all right now you can also take your blade if you like or a coffee stir or something else kind of thin and flat if you like you kind of press down that gives you a little bit of leverage to kind of work that surround down along the angle of the cone just like this sometimes it's a little easier to use something like this towards the end of your setup on the cone to make sure that everything's positioned properly. And you're not cutting through the foam here, you're just pressing down and just using that as a tool. Again, you can use coffee stir or something else along those lines to do that for you. Okay. This is what you want right in here like this. Okay. We're going to let that dry up and we'll come back and show you the attachment to the frame and the installation of the gasket and uh, the final testing. Alright, so we've done the attachment to the cone like we showed you uh, here just a few seconds ago and we let that dry up for about yeah, about an hour or so. You want to want to let that cure before we come back and actually glue the foam down to the frame. Okay, that way we have a good secure bond here all the way around the cone, uh, and that's important. Again, we showed you the top mount on this model, um, and the performance will be identical for you uh, to the original rear mount there. So don't worry about that. But that's the look that you're after. And once that dries for about an hour or so, we come back and we'll do the gluing to the frame, and that part's fairly straightforward. So we'll go ahead and just get the glue ready to go. We'll come out here like this, put a nice bead about an eighth of an inch wide right in the middle of the frame. Try to keep it right in the middle. When you press the foam back down, it'll spread the adhesive for you. So you're just kind of running this by hand. Don't squeeze the bottle too hard on the tube of the glue, otherwise you get a little bit messy there. Try to go slow here for you and lift that up so the camera can see what's going on. Okay, there we go. So one time around, cap the glue there, and that's what you're looking for, all the way around, just like that, okay? That's perfect. We'll set that back down, and at this point, we'll just kind of tuck the foam within the ridge of the frame, like this. That action alone is spreading the adhesive for you, okay? So what happens is, when you lift it back up, you see you have a nice layer of glue, the entire width of the frame and the entire width of the foam, all the way around. So you don't need to spread that by hand, just pressing down on the outside with your fingertips is plenty to do exactly what you need right there. Okay, and once it gets down within the grooves of the frame, these ridges of the frame along the side here will kind of secure that for you. All right, and before that dries up too long, we want to kind of give it a little centering technique here. The fact that the part is, is a perfect fit and it's such a kind of a tight, snug fit there, the cone and voice coil action will be centered pretty much automatically for you, as you can see there, just like that. Okay, we like to give it a little bit of pressure on each side. If there's any rubbing on any one side, just slightly move it over to the other side. But in the case of this particular speaker, it's typically not necessary. So we'll let that uh, start to kind of set up there, kind of work that. You can get your fingers behind the cone and kind of lift it up a little bit as well, like we're showing you here. That works very well. Make sure that the movement of the cone is free, that you're not hearing any scraping or feeling any friction in the voice coil area, which is down behind this center dust cap in the magnet structure. And that's kind of the key to the repair so that everything moves properly and the speaker has a clean sound without any distortion. Okay, and you'll see that that's fairly straightforward. Just kind of working that here, let the adhesive cure. When we're done with the repair, we'll test it on a signal generator that we have over to the side here on our power amplifier. Um, you'll see some stuff out there on YouTube and some other places where people download apps on their iPhones and things and run those through a power amplifier and that's all fine for testing if you need to uh, but it's typically not required <coughs> we keep a professional grade signal generator here at the shop that we use for that 
and we realize most folks don't have those at home. So you can certainly do a final testing just with your regular audio amplifier if you like, um, or if you wanted to download one of those <coughs> sound apps on your phone or your iPad, you can then plug that into your amplifier as well if you feel that's necessary. But it's really not required, and uh, we don't need to do that uh, here at the shop. So. So this is what you want here. I'm going to go ahead and apply a bead of uh, adhesive on the back of this gasket here once this dries up for a little bit. We'll do this. We'll apply the uh, gasket back down. We'll let that dry for a little bit. We'll do a final testing on it. And at that point, uh, this will be ready to install back into the uh, car. All right, so we've let our adhesive set up on the frame here now on the outside. Uh, just like on the cone, we let the adhesive set up on the frame for about an hour. Then we come back and we can go ahead and glue the gasket. Uh, real simple and straightforward there. I like to just set the gasket upside down right on the speaker and then we'll apply a little bead of adhesive right to the edge of the gasket, just like this. It doesn't take much, about a sixteenth of an inch wide, maybe an eighth of an inch wide is all you need to do. Okay, one time around just like that. Pick the gasket up, we'll flip it over, we'll set it down in place. Okay. And then to let that dry, we'll actually set the speaker upside down just like that. And we'll let that set up for probably another half hour or so to an hour um, if you have the time and you're not in too much of a hurry. That's a good thing to allow that to set up. Um, in this case though, we'll just kind of move forward and show you uh, just testing it out real quick with the signal generator here. But that's what you do and uh, once that dries for about an hour or so, you're ready to go back in the car with it. You've got the speaker clips that are in the vehicle here that go right in place. Four screws in and uh, you fire it up and you are good to go on that. So we'll bring this back around like this, wipe up any excess that we have. Okay, and right over here we have the signal generator that we use. Uh, and again, at home you won't have that, but you can use your amplifier if you like. In most cases, if you follow the repair procedures that we showed you, as soon as you put it back in the car, you're, you're fine. You don't need to do any real pre-testing on it, um, but we like to show that here at the shop. And it doesn't really matter on this, it's alternating current, which one you go to. So we'll just clip a black and a red on that, just like that, and you'll see we have that set. Uh, that's at about 100 hertz there, so we'll sweep that down just a little bit for you and show you how that works. Okay, it just gives you an idea of the action of the speaker when it's mounted in the in the vehicle working for you. Okay, so that's it. Just a quick little test on that, and that'll complete our uh, service for you on the uh, JBL speaker out of the Toyota Tundra and Sequoia. And if you need parts for any of the other ones, we always have those available on our website at simplyspeakers.com, or you can send them in to us, and we'll be glad to uh, do the professional repair for you uh, in-house. Uh, and get them shipped back and ready to go.